Lady Barbara Warhope. Something tells me nobody ever called her Babs. Very early in the 18th century, this woman just doesn't decide to get rid of a philandering husband. She decides that she is going to keep her money and her reputation. And amazingly, she manages all three, which is astounding. But before we go to the divorce courts with Lady Barbara, let's look at the man that Lady Barbara decided to get rid of. Sir George Seton. Sir George Seton, Hugmanay, 1704, 1705. New Year's Day, he's having a very bad day, or he's going to have a very bad day. He's lying in his bed in his lodgings in the old town of Edinburgh, which is just a rabbit warren. And as he's lying abed, it should have crossed his mind at some point that this was the Sabbath. So he really did have somewhere better to be. But secondly, as he's lying there, probably nursing a wee sore head, he suddenly hears his landlady out the door. I would imagine on the stairs, I like to think, going like this, I would think. Oh, sirs, why are you trying to break into my house? Good heavens, this is a place of good repute. Why are you doing this? And there'd be a lot of people running up the stairs. It is. It's a town guard and the Kirk Session. And they come crashing in to Sir George's room. There they've discovered Sir George only partially dressed, because presumably he's heard the noise. But they also discover something else. A lady. Her name is Anna Cheesley. And she's hiding behind the headboard, which is never a dignified thing to do. Also, they discover as they put mixed underclothing on the floor. You can't get anything past these guys, right? So they know that this is not the good lady wife of Sir George. He has been caught red-handed. So that's what they tell him. Sir so George then makes the situation worse. In fact, the more you read of Sir George, you realise there's never a situation that George can't make worse. He says to the uh, Kirk Sessions, surely, there is some way that we can gloss over this indiscretion, this, this little fall from grace, after all. Perhaps I am not the baronet you are seeking. That might work for Jedi Knights, but it does not work against the Kirk Sessions. They haul Sir George off to the toll booth and Anna and bang him up. Now he thinks his day's bad. It's about to get a lot worse. Because then they go and they tell his wife. This is the redoubtable and the remarkable Lady Barbara. Now Lady Barbara has had to put up with a lot from this guy. He's been all over the old town, everybody knows about it, everybody's been talking about it. Not only that, at one point he even managed to get one of the servants at their country house, Garleton Pregnant, brought the girl into the old town when she was in labour and dumped her in the close in the high street where one of the midwives lived and left there as her waters broke and he scarpered. He's not a gentleman of the year, any year, quite frankly. So she's got a lot to put up with. 1705, though, women are supposed to look the other way, put the fan over their face and just pretend they didn't see anything. Lady Barbara decides not to. Lady Barbara decides to go for divorce. Now, you can divorce in Scotland. Basically, he's broken the law with adultery, so she's been abandoned. So she can actually go for divorce, but it's massively risky. Your reputation will be dried through the mud. There's a very strong chance you'll lose your money. You will lose your marriage portion, probably. There's also a very strong chance you will get your children taken off you. But she decides to go for it. But not only that, Lady Barbara's a Catholic. So George and she are supposed to be pillars of the Roman Catholic community. It was probably an arranged marriage, and it, it probably was. And she is a good daughter of the Roman Catholic Church. She, she is a good, devout woman, an excellent mother by all accounts. He, however, seems to find new ways to break his marriage vows every time he opens his eyes. So she has a problem on her hands, but she goes to the commissary court and she begins an action of divorce. Now, for a woman of her breeding and class, this must have been appalling. Because amongst other things, 30 witnesses that she calls, these are landladies from all over the old town, or tavern owners who've got rooms to let, they will come in and they will give depositions and testimonies as to what Sir George has been up to. And not only that, they will have to point at Lady Barbara and say, this is not the woman he was sleeping with. Now, that is, for a woman of any class, humiliating. But for a woman like Lady Barbara, who is not supposed to be seen in public in this manner, it must have been absolutely traumatising. But she goes through with it. But not only that, she has to listen to the testimony. 
And you can imagine the testimony is, um, well, it's it would make even the, the lay lamented news of the world uh, blush. One landlady, for example, complains that Anna Cheesley, remember Anna Cheesley? Complains that Anna Cheesley turned up with a trollop from Leith. Mm. Her name was Elizabeth Small. And all three of them, Sir George and the two women, to drink away the night and it was starting to look as if uh, the two of them were going to be staying there and uh, two two women and one man uh -huh, threesome and so she did what any good landlady with a good reputation would do she went straight to the town garden and she had the whole party broken up which is <laughs> very 21st century when you think about social distancing measures so Barbara has to listen to all of this and he keeps sniping away and it's dragging everything is dragging out and by the way he is now in debtor's prison at the Abbey Street. So he's he's like in loads of trouble as it is. But suddenly he comes out with a brilliant plan. Brilliant plan. He tells the court that his wife cannot have a divorce because she's a Roman Catholic. And she made these sacred vows. And therefore she she cannot divorce. Furthermore, she made her vows on a Protestant Bible. Ha! So that's not right either. So the the law lords of the court pretty much chuck the she swore on the wrong Bible point out fairly quickly. But Lady Barbara has a secret weapon. In the country house of Garleton, which is in the Lothians, she has an entire mini college of Jesuit priests. They're there doing training and what we would call outreach work, but they are being hidden at Garleton. So Lady Barbara goes out to the country house where she can talk not just to a priest but to a Jesuit priest to discuss the issue of a good daughter of the church suing for divorce. And the answer comes back, yes, yes she can, as long as she undertakes never to marry again. Now Lady Barbara has probably had up to about here with men and that's exactly what she says, that's fine, that's okay by me. Shoots back to the court. Yep, everything is fine. I have kept my vow, my vows. I will keep my vows, for I will marry no other. But him, as for him, and what is remarkable is that a Roman Catholic lady, at a time when things are a bit testy for for the Catholic faith in Scotland, <laughs> when have they ever not been? Is standing in a court in front of Protestant judges, Calvinists, and they find in her favour. Overwhelmingly. Not only do they tell her it's a good idea to get shot of him, they also say she can have her lands and her marriage portion and her children's inheritance will be secured. It's a remarkable achievement. Absolutely incredible. To have the courage to do that. To know that as you walked into the court every single day you're going to be looked at, stared at and hear the whispering behind you. But she does it. She goes ahead with it. And you might ask yourself, well, why? Because she is a good daughter of the church and she, she's a woman of great faith. Why would she do this? Why would she, she stand there and humiliate herself like this? Well, there's a few reasons, I think. One is Sir George, and I think this is probably the most telling one, Sir George is costing the family a great deal of money. He is being fined and fined heavily for his carry-ons all over the city. He's also in massive debt, probably gambling debt. At one point, he's owing £44,000 Scots. That's about, that's about half a million. I mean, he is a rich man. Well, was. So the, the money, the inheritance is being drained away. She has to do something about that. She has to get the family's reputation back. And by doing something as extraordinary as this, I believe she does. Because people do think very highly of her. They don't think much of George, Sir George, actually. And so she walks from that court a free woman. She has her lands, she has her money, she has protected her son's inheritances, she has protected her daughters so that they can marry and, and remain married well. That's why I think she is remarkable, a totally remarkable woman. What I also think uh, is, is, is interesting about her is the fact that she, she just keeps going despite the fact that he's quite clearly trying to stop this happening. She, she thinks him at every turn. And what happens to him? He gets to keep Galton, incidentally, uh, but not for very long. 
he has to sell it because one of his creditors is after him. So he pretty much broke after that. And finally, there is another woman in the case, isn't there? That we've slightly forgotten about. Anna Cheesley, the other woman. Well, we don't really know what happens to her in the end, but we do know that she is is fined constantly for her liaison with, with Sir George. She used to be a businesswoman. She owned her own shop up in the exchange. She sold cravats to gentlemen. That's probably how they met. She lost that. She had some silver made and engraved with their initials together. So it looks like she thought she was going to spend the rest of her life with them. But Sir George did not have a good track record. Lady Barbara, on the other hand, her children love her, adore her. And she dies in the Canongate much later. Leaves her money to her daughters, Barbara and Anne, who look after her most devotedly in her final days. A woman who finally had had enough in a world where she was supposed to put up with things, but said, no more. And what's more, I'm taking what's mine.